Welcome to Women's Social Corner. I'm Janvi and this is Editor's Pick, a special segment where we sit with people from different walks of life and get insights into their journey and their story. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. I'm sitting with a woman who needs no introduction. We are going to talk to Ma Anand Sheila in Vadodara and we'll get insights into her journey. Obviously, we are going to talk about Osho, Bhagwan, and we are going to talk about what brings her joy and peace right now. So let's get to the conversation. Sheila Ji, welcome to Women Social Corner. It is a pleasure to sit with you today. And to start with, I'm curious to know that we are in Vadodara, a city where you started your journey. And then, you know, Oregon happened and commune happened. Tell me about that transition. When did you became that person, you know, who was very courageous and who could lead a team? I no? think uh, at that time, probably I had only stupid courage, not no. defined courage like this. Okay. Um, when young people do dumb things and uh, break their leg or something yeah. that I always had. Okay. So, and it helped me with transition. Okay. I didn't think of the future. Yeah. I thought of the moment, what is interesting, what is True. moves my heart, and I went for it. And my father mm. and mother were big uh, motivator to us children. Okay. I was the youngest of six children, yeah. born in Baroda, yeah. and lived in Baroda till I was 16. Okay. Then my father sent me to US yeah. to study. After that, yeah. I come to visit my parents after five years, and uh, my father takes me to Bhagwan again. Yeah. And then we know the story, yeah. But were you always so outspoken about like what you felt and what you want to do? And uh, Not just I was outspoken, we all six siblings are outspoken. Okay, so that's a Gujarati? Uh, yeah, okay. it is Gujarati, but it is also training of parents. Okay. Father believed in freedom. He did not believe in the traditional social values. Okay. He, for example, we were earlier talking about marriage. Mm. Some of my relatives would trouble my mother that your girls are all grown up. When are you going to look for a husband? Yeah. My mother would say, go speak to my husband. Oh our father. Yeah, yeah. They go there, say, I'm going to marry or they're going to marry. Yeah. If they're going to marry, they should choose yes. what is suitable for them, True. what they want, yeah. not me. No. True. That's how... That was. is how much freedom they had given us. True. He used to always say, I have not four daughters. I have six children. Very interesting. Neutral way to look at it. Yeah. It wasn't that my two sons and four daughters. No. I have six children. Interesting. So it shows you the attitude. There already he started correct values and definitions of the words. True. And the parenting style really mattered. True. Right. But when, you, when you're talking about your journey, you say that it was bad courage in the sense, um, like, is there anything that you would want to change when you look at your journey right now, retrospectively? I never said it was a bad courage. Yeah. I simply said stupid courage. Right. Yeah. Bad and stupid are two different, different. things. Yeah. And no, I would not change it. Anything. Yeah, because that was the training. That Those were the first steps of courage. True. You cannot yeah. 
define courage from the start because you don't know you yeah. have to make yeah. mistakes so true, true. i would not change it. anything about your journey in the sense you like yeah. not a single thing true when we talk about your and bhagwan's relationship and whatever bhagwan said about you but you always uh, spoken very nicely of him and there is only love that you speak about tell me is there anything called unconditional love because the youngsters wouldn't know what that is well i don't have any definition yeah. of unconditional love yeah. what i felt in my heart yeah. was without limits there were no limits yeah. i was simply in love with this man True. i look at him and i melt like a what puddle of water true and how to sustain that love for so long in the sense like today when we don't have him physically around you still speak so fondly as if you still you know that love is sustained how does that work it is not my quality it is the quality of the love okay when you love there is no question of sustaining it is simply there it's simply there yeah. so it talks about the quality of the love yeah. and the quality of the love that i felt shines in all my work Was because i worked from my heart yeah but was there a moment where you had to like forgive him for whatever he said or no that was out of question forgive him he <laughs> oh, <no>. never <laughs> he i have never used words like forgive okay okay But these are christian words i don't use them interesting it's not my vocabulary okay. Christianity teaches us hmm. to to feel guilty and forgive. Yeah. And we free of those words. Bhagwan has cured me. Oh, lovely. And um, when we talk about love and relationship tell me that uh, today we see um, like people having multiple relationships. What are your thoughts on this like adultery and such? word adultery doesn't exist multiple relations are healthy take care of the sexual context that part yeah. is uh, you have to be really yeah. clear it's about it take care of your body yeah it's a precious apparat true yeah. and don't let it damage Okay. but don't make it a moral issue okay the moment you make it a moral issue you will fall into the trap of guilt and forgiveness yeah. and with it comes depression okay you fall into the trap yeah, yeah that is a absolute trap so don't fall for that If you want to be happy in a relationship don't expect truth and don't lose your freedom your freedom will set the quality of your of relationship. relationship as far as this is taken care of everything else is fine yeah Without. and and what about marriage because you also have very interesting views on that <laughs> marriage <laughs> it is a convenience of the social need yeah. and life should not be always convenient yeah. we don't like to come out of our comfort zone we tolerate yeah. we tolerate nonsense in relationships we tolerate brutality yeah. not acceptable under any circumstances not acceptable your freedom is very valuable that freedom should not be affected in any form any shape yeah 
It is not a bargaining point. Sure. It is your human right. You were born with your right. That's how come you came out of Kabir Mutar. That's how come you came out of the womb. Sure. You wanted your freedom. Yeah. But then what about the idea of commitment? That I am committed to this person, so I will not, you know, cross that line. If you commit, yeah. you will also break the commitment. That is also a trap. We are all in our head. Right. So, if you love, no question of commitment. And love is not sex. Two separate issues. Two separate things. Things true. In one of your interviews with Barkha Dutt, you had a very interesting take on spirituality, where you said that you can call me a criminal but not a spiritual person. And I would want you to elaborate it because that's a very interesting statement. What is spirituality? To <laughs> what is spirituality? I ask you. Yeah. Everybody talks about spirituality. Yeah. Any yoga teacher doing yoga exercise calls themselves very spiritual. spiritual yeah. You go to the uh, sports studio and you do your sport. It's the same thing. You yeah. call it yoga or sport. sport yeah. So there's, there's labels, you think? These are labels and these labels are deceptive. Okay. Why do we need spirituality? I ask you. If you live your life in your own honesty, you don't, you don't need to be. Okay. But to keep sane or to, you know, some people say that we'll uh, get more sure, you know, that such And concepts. what will you do? You will get utterly bored. <laughs> I lived in a heaven. Yeah. Luckily, I had a lot of work, so <laughs> I wasn't bored. True. But the meditators sometimes yeah. were bored. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Because you you sit so close to Bhagwan and you're not talking about words like meditation. You're not interested in enlightenment, and that's very interesting because most people would assume that these are the things what people do in an ashram or in a commune. Like yeah. because I was living a real life there. Yeah. I didn't need any cigarettes in between. Yeah, it was work and all and these words are like cigarettes, gifted. Poisonous. Okay. Then that's how you entertain and dilute your mind. True. I don't believe in dilute. Dilu illusion, delusion. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. Okay. That honesty also I have learned from my parents and Pakwan. Okay. But Today in India, there's so many spiritual gurus uh, upcoming, you know, trying to uh, get into that space. Do you see any guru or uh, you see any hope in any of them that, okay, you know, you see some spark, some depth here? I have, do you want to name any? I have done my guru shopping in my <laughs> life. I don't need to go shopping for gurus anymore and I don't go. Okay. I have found my diamond. I don't need any other diamonds. But no observations also, right? Like, wow. No judgment. If you find somebody that touches you the way Bhagwan touched me, yeah. you will understand me. But you've learned so much from it. Is there something, uh, one aspect of it or something that has stayed with you? Something that you would want to share? Like, there must be so much, so many things, but anything that you would want to share? I share complete Bhagwan to you. Every opportunity you get to listen to him, read him, do it. Okay. It will touch you somewhere. And if you read it with an open mind, without judgment, yeah. definitely it will fill your heart. True. 
but bhagwan had said so many things which didn't work very well with the contemporary religious gurus or pundits because he spoke the truth what are your points on and temples? every every one of them follow bhagwan's yeah, uh, yeah. words words true that tells you everything yeah, yeah. true they cannot sell their um their philosophy they cannot sell their product yeah. so they ch- steal it from bhagwan and sell it yeah. pa- package it little different and sell it do you believe that every religion is a hard for business definitely it was in egyptian time also okay would you talk the same about what happened in oregon that was one of the conflict where i said to bhagwan through a media yeah. because i was no longer in rajneesh puram yeah. uh-huh. i said your i don't remember exact mm-hmm. words yeah. anymore uh-huh. because it yeah, has been, been many years yes, now yeah. that it has become manipulative I use the right word manipulative yeah. but what rest I didn't I don't remember and he knew that I was talking right yeah. right that I am his student I am his disciple true. in the true sense nobody had courage to say that to Bhagwan I did so what i say is spirituality has become a fashion in the moment okay uh all these meditation app, uh, apps for computers yeah. and yeah. so i don't want to make them any damage yeah. for their businesses mm. if nothing else you will find few minute of rest from yeah. your relationships and things enjoy it's, it even that works <laughs> yeah but uh, tell me shila ji what do you look from life right now what is your motivation my motivation is whatever last days i have in my life i want to be continuing constructive bringing positivity on this earth wherever i can without seeking approvals without seeking uh, i i do what i do it's my pleasure and i do things only that bring me pleasure yeah. but does that scare you no no it frees me it uh, scares maybe people like Miriam who love me or my sisters <laughs> they think i will do something stupid and not watch out for myself yeah. and my last day will be here so they before i travel i promise them i won't do anything stupid okay <laughs> and today when you look at your journey do you have any regrets i don't know that word that is again Christian. how programmed we are by christianity okay why would you regret if you take responsibility for your action there's nothing to regret and we are taught not to take responsibility fasal sir you can try out as an experiment you make a mistake in your work yeah and somebody corrects you and your first different no no it wasn't me no no yeah, yeah. i don't know way. anything about it if you have done your mistake say yeah it was a mistake give me i correct it i learn through it It's a simple event. You don't have to go and insist that no, 
I haven't done the mistake. If I have done mistake, yeah. I have reflected yeah. on it, and, you and I know where I have done mistake. Yeah. So no regrets. No regrets. Lastly, tell us uh, the secret of this inner strength, apart from your love for Bhagwan and what you learn from him. Where does this inner strength come from? Like, is it just being on your own? Love for my parents. Love for my siblings and love for Bhagwan. I call my life as a triangle: Bhagwan, father, mother, and it completes the circle of my life. I hope you all have an interesting story like you did. I and everybody has it. Just learn to look at it right. Yeah. And um, I, in the beginning, I off the camera, I was asking you that what is your motivation, you know, to talk to media, and now after so many years, share your side of the journey. If you would want to answer. Very good question. I write about this in my last book last by book. my own rules. Yeah. Penguin Books publication of yeah. uh, 2021. My father in 1995 or the 1996 one day says to me, Shili, you cannot remain quiet. You must speak. You have experience of life one in a million. And you can inspire the young generation. You must speak every time somebody comes to speak. That's when I wrote my book, Don't Kill Him. And I dedicate it also to my father, mother. So, it was my father, father who, who insisted yeah. I must speak. And I don't go out looking for journalists. Mm. They come mm. and connect yeah. with me like you have. Mm. It is the same story yeah. with others. Yeah. Even Wild Wild Country, these two Hollywood directors yeah. contacted me and filmed me for five days. Oh, God. Okay, so, and they did their story, I have not seen it, Okay, but I have heard from yeah. many uh, people on Instagram how they have been affected, so my father is right yeah. that people will be inspired. True. Totally, totally. I hope you share more of your journey and insights from the valuable journey that you had, and thank you so much for your time. For more such interviews, keep watching Women's Social Economy.